welcome to my Panama mud helm. So today the video that I'm going to show you is us finishing up the mud plaster to the extension of this house that I built. Um, I did the architecture for it, I did the design, the engineering of it, so we put in the roof first, then we put in the bamboo to serve as kind of the, the grip, the structure for all of our barro, our cob, our mud to grip onto. And so today I'm going to show you us finishing up the mud plaster for that space and then also doing the interior walls of that side of the house. So the bathroom, the bedroom, all the interior walls are also made out of bamboo, mud, straw, and sand. One thing that I think will be really helpful, which I'm going to show later in the video, is the texture that you want to look for when you are doing cob or mud plastering, if you're going to be using it for walls. Now there's lots of different techniques, um, there's lots of different textures and proportions you need if you're doing floors or finishing plasters, so this is essentially the texture that you're going to want for the, the main bulk of the wall. This is what's going to be your insulation, this is what's going to be your structure, and so I'm going to show you kind of what you want to look for. We're also going to be making some furniture out of bamboo and cob. And so um, in this video, I'll show you us making the bamboo vanity for our bathroom. And then in the next videos, I'm going to be showing you how we made our kitchen and desks the same way. One thing that I found really interesting and surprising when I first got to uh, Panama and started learning more about natural building, not just from the people here, but um, from my own studies, is that a lot of that knowledge has not been passed down. So even though I live in an area that's four hours away from Panama City, it's a very isolated area, mostly you know very small indigenous communities, we have uh, 100 people that live within our small town here. And so I thought that moving to a town like this that everybody would know. It would be common knowledge of you know what texture you need, what does it need to feel like um, in order to get a mix that doesn't crack. But um, it surprised me that that knowledge was not really here. So what I've had to do is kind of teach the people here what texture you're looking for. I tell them to add more sand, add more straw, because if you're looking at it and um, you're unfamiliar with it, it might look fine. But when you've had a little bit of experience with it, once you feel it, once you um, get a feeling for the consistency you're looking for, if it's sticky, if it's dry, if it's gritty, um, if it's hard to work with, easy to work with, you know that it's gonna crack and kind of be a little bit brittle or you know that it's going to cure very solid, very strong. So I had a lot of members of my community, I think maybe six or seven in this video, come and help to, you know, help me mix it. Um, and then in that process, they're also doing some learning. They're also learning, you know, okay, if it feels this way, you need to add more sand to it, otherwise it's going to crack. And that's one reason why a lot of these homes in this area have been torn down so frequently is because when the knowledge isn't passed down and then you get homes that kind of crack and fall apart, of course you're going to want to do a concrete home or something else that's a bit more modern because, you know, your home is, it's falling apart. It's not lasting and withstanding the rain and all of that. So um, by knowing the correct consistency that you need in order to get a mud home that is super strong that won't crack on you then you know hopefully that'll encourage people to keep building these homes instead of opting for the more um, modern version so we've got interior walls finishing the bedroom learning how to make the cob mix and building a bamboo vanity in this video and i hope you all enjoy <laughs> Okay. 
primero clavamos este acá, a ellos. Y otro entre los otros dos. So we have the two pieces that are going to hold up the bottom shelf and we're going to, we flipped it over so they both sit on the inside and we're going to lay out the pieces that make up the shelf on top of those and then the upper shelf on top of the ones on top. This is the mud that we've prepared for today. We're going to be finishing up the bedroom and the inside walls of the bathroom. So you want to let this land sit overnight and the water helps to break up the clay. So you don't want to move it too much. So overnight you want it just to sit in water and the water helps to break up the clay. We added more sand than last time so we get a grittier mixture. You want to have more sand. Uh, at least 70% and so we're stomping it now in the morning just to make sure that it's all well mixed and then we're going to add in the paha, the hay, which is a corn based straw that we have and mix it again with our feet and start to put it up on the walls. finish stomping and adding the hay. After we add the hay, we add a little bit more water on top. It makes it easier to mix and you want something that's really, once it starts getting really hard to work with your feet, then you know that it's getting there. It should be very hard to step through. The one thing that I would change with the way that we do it, this is a traditional way of doing it, but in the Panamanian style, you lay it all out. You have the mud, you have the paja, the straw, and you step on it. Usually it's arm in arm with your neighbors and friends. The thing with that is that you get a lot of the hay that sits on the bottom and gets stuck and then you get a top layer that doesn't have very much hay. So if you do have access to something that's like a tarp or a really durable hard um, wide surface like a big piece of leather or something or rubber then you can Mix it with your feet, step on it, but then flip it over, roll it over on itself. Lift up the tarp or rubber and it will give you a better mixing and it will prevent a lot of the straw from staying at the bottom. So this is the kind of texture that you're looking for. It's hard to, hard to step on, filled with hay, lots of sand needs to be very hard to to work and then you take off big chunks and then we can build with it <laughs> looks like the rains are coming in so we are doing this just in time it is the 25th of May 2021 we are about to finish up the 
bedroom wall over there and start to work on some of the inside walls that separate the bathroom and the bedroom. All of this addition we've put on this year, all the wood, the planks on the roof, the bamboo, the mud, all of that's done this year, 2021. The rest of the house is done 2019. We fixed the roof also this year. So now we get no water coming in. We have probably a couple weeks left, maybe less, you never know with the rainy season, but we are so fortunate to have been able to had a couple sunny days this past week to finish this up, finish this project up. So this door we just carved out of the barrow that we had before. There wasn't any structural wood beam that was here. So you just can cut it and you'll see the bamboo. There was some vertical bamboo that was there, but it's okay. We can just leave this as is, but what we're going to do just in case is put a wood beam with two side wood pillars on either side of this door frame, just for extra protection. And this is the what we're going to be doing today. So we have, this is the door to the bathroom, which I um, put in yesterday, just a frame. You wanna have a frame so that you have wood support on the top and that wood support helps with the weight of the barro or the cob that's on top. If you don't have anything that's helping with the weight of it while it dries, then you're gonna probably get um, falling cob and um, yeah, so you wanna make sure that you protect it. Also, if you have a lot of weight on top of it, is to add little cross beams like we did with that window back there. Those cross um, pieces of wood that are nailed in help to prevent the bending of the top piece of wood as it dries from all the weight. We don't really have that much weight on top of this door here, so decided to not put them in, but you could definitely put those in. This is a curved bathroom curved wall that separates the bathroom and bedroom from the rest of the house. A little hallway that we built in and this tree is a support for the roof for most of the side of the house it's it's in contact with. So this is a very big tree about 13 feet long. Meccano. And this is the part of the house we're going to do today. We have this side of the bed bedroom. We're gonna finish up that. Then we're gonna start working on the closet space. So we're going to fill in all of this and fill in this wall and the interior walls. We have our electricity already done and put in so that we can plaster over it. So you wanna make sure that you have any kind of plumbing or tubing or Anything that needs to go inside the walls already done and in their place, tied up and secured somehow so that um, you don't have to worry about it. So this side of the house, this is the part of the house that we did in 2019 and this part of the house is what we did about a week and a half ago and it is still slightly, very, very slightly sticky to the touch but it's not really coming off too much on my fingers anymore. Um, we still have, you know, some plant life that's coming out of it, some grass and greens, but it is drying slowly but surely, and that's what you want. If you have it super hot, then it will crack and dry out too fast. So a nice slow cure process works great for us. 
So that also means that if you're building in summer, then you want to have some kind of protection, like a tarp that you regularly mist once a day or twice a day if it's very hot in order to keep the moisture in the wall to get the walls to not dry out too fast so they don't crack on you. This used to be a door. We were originally going to have this be the entrance to the bathroom, but it just didn't leave us with enough space. And this door, the framework of it, was necessary for the structural integrity of the house. So we just decided to put in some bamboo across it, make a cage, and then mud plaster over it. So now we have a wall that's there that wasn't there before. And the door is forever enclosed little secret for the people who uh, made this house. Maybe someone will find out someday. So this is our bathroom. I have um, a vanity here that we mud plastered over. We're still going to add some more mud plaster to level it out, make it nice. These are just here to support the roof while we put the tiles on. Um, and we'll be line plastering all of this. We didn't get too much cracking on the inside. But basically the um, process is to build your roof first. You build all the wooden structure for the roof. Once that's all ready, then you can lay out the bamboo. And after that, mud plaster over it. So the walls come last, roof first. Um, and you can make whatever shape that you want. So we kind of wanted a vanity that was earthen and kind of like one piece with the rest of the house, with the walls. So we might add, you know, some something here to close it up, something natural, bamboo or wood, so uh, we're still going to work on this, but the bathroom is officially closed up.